Hi guys, today we're going to be doing this. So you're going to learn how to do a mask wipe. And the second thing you're going to learn is how to use the bevel tool I created to create this kind of animation. This animation is heavily inspired by Dope Motion's After Effects video around the same effect. Link in the description and up there. Let's get to it. Open the Fusion page. Let's bring in the DaVinci Resolve Studio logo. Let's disconnect media out for now. Let's drag that to the viewer, make this a single viewer. And let's bring in the bevel tool. I created a bevel tool two tutorials back. Link up in the cards up there or check in the description. Download the bevel tool and install. Let's get back to the tutorial. You go to effects, under effects, expand templates. Then under templates, click on search. Let's just type bevel. Let's drag that to the node grid, right click on it and ungroup it. Now that's ungrouped. Bring in a displace node, shift space bar, displace node. Add that. Then let's bring in a polygon mask node. Let's drag this to the viewer. Let's expand this down a little bit. Let's screw up a bit, 25%. So we just draw something like this select all the points then press shift s on the keyboard to smoothen it out let's just move it together a little bit move it together a little bit okay it doesn't have to be perfect just something like this bring this down a little bit let's click on an empty button node grid your space bar bring in a duplicate node add this Make sure you connect this to the yellow input. Drag this to the viewer. Once make it two copies. The center X, we shift it to the side a little bit. One other thing we need to do on the polygon node for the soft edge, let's say 0 0.02, so it's a bit soft. Then we drag this to the left, then bring in a transform node, connect this to the transform node and connect the transform node to the orange input of this displaced node. Connect the output of this displaced node from the ungrouped bevel tool to the green input of this displace. Let me move this so it aligns properly. If we drag this to the viewer, so we need to connect this image to the input of this merge for the bevel tool. Then we have something there. We go to this displaced node, the refraction strength, drag it to the max. So that's two. Before this is the first part where we deal with the reflective surface. Bring in a merge node. We place this on the background of the merge node and connect this to the foreground. If you drag this to the viewer, we have this thing here. Let's, let's make it fit. We want it to open only in the space where the image occupies. So we are going to bring this here back like so. Shift space bar, bring in a bitmap node and connect the output of this merge to this bitmap input. If we drag this to the viewer, we see we have this. Then we can connect the output of this bitmap to the mask input of this merge. So if we drag this to the viewer now, we see it's limited only to the space for the image. But we want to be able to now wipe this off. So we're gonna bring in another merge node. We're gonna connect this to the foreground and then the original image here, we're going to connect that to the background here. I can press Alt on the keyboard when I click on this line to create a pipe router. And drag that here. Let's move this up a little bit. Let me put another pipe router here. Alt, click. So we have this. We can drag this down a little, drag this up a bit. Then we bring in a rectangular mask. Connect the rectangle mask to the mask input of this merge 4. For the rectangle mask, set the height to 2.5. And the width here, we can set it to perhaps 0 0.9. The angle, set it to 30. And then if I now go here, and I move this X. Let me drag this to the viewer so we get to see what's happening here. I move it there, you see it wiping on and off. But it doesn't look exactly how we want it to look because the glossy part is not moving along with this mask. So what we're going to do is pin this rectangle mask in the inspector, then click on transform. So we have transform here. We have the rectangle mask here. 
right click on the center for the transform node click expressions connect this the center values for the rectangle mask so each time i move the rectangle mask that moves too but you see that the edge is kind of sharp so i'm going to go to rectangle one mask go to the soft edge set that to 0 0.1 so if we move this now you see beautiful stuff beautiful stuff one other thing for this transform we just make sure we set the canvas to we set the edges to wrap and let's unpin the rectangle one mask then we create a bit of an animation here now, before we get to the animation, we are done with the part for the glossy thing over the logo. Let's just package it all together. Let's make it that before the reflection passes over the logo, the logo appears through a mask white. So let me drag this up a little bit, create some space. Here, I'm going to click on merge. Then move all of this forward a bit. Now here, I'm going to put the white. I'm going to bring in a rectangle mask. I'm going to bring in a fast noise node. Then I'm going to bring in a displaced node. This, this node is a fantastic node and I urge you to use it. So rectangle mask is what I want to displace. So I'm going to connect the rectangle mask to the orange input of the displaced node and connect fast noise to the green input. Now for this fast noise, drag it to the viewer. I'm going to go to color, drag the alpha to one, go to noise. Let's just scale it up a little bit, increase the contrast. If we drag this to the viewer now, let's move all of this up a little bit. I go to this display, so I go to X, Y. Now for Y refraction, I increase it to Y075 to increase the width to one and the height to one. I'm going to, after this, I'm going to bring in a transform node, connect this to the transform node, drag this to the viewer, set the size of this transform node to two. And the reason why I do that is I want it such that when this comes like so, it just wipes off cleanly. So I want this to be a little more detailed. I'm going to go to the fast noise and increase the detail on it so it looks like so. And I can increase the scale a wee bit more. Maybe like this. Okay. At the beginning, I want this rectangle mask to be completely off screen. At this point, let's go to frame zero. I click on that to keyframe it. Then I go to frame 30 and I increase the Y value till it fills up it back a bit. So we see everything. I go to spline editor, click on displacement, click on zoom to fit, click on this to select all the keyframes. I press F on the keyboard to smoothen it out, close spline editor. We can now use this as a mask for the input of this here. This needs to be connected to the foreground and then the background here, I can connect a transparent background to it. So I just connect this to that. If we drag to the viewer now, you'll see we have this. That wipes on, then we now want this to start somewhere around frame 35. So I'm going to go to this rectangle mask, drag this to the viewer. We're going to make it that this rectangle mask is here. Keyframe this. Then we move forward by 40 frames. That's what? That's 10, 20, 30, 40. Click on frame 75 and drag this X value across the screen till it goes to the edge of a frame. You can go here, go to spline editor. Zoom to fit, select all keyframes, right click on this. I want it to be in and out cubic. That's the same thing as pressing F on the keyboard. Close the spline editor. Then I want to now add a bit of a transform here. Connect this here. I want this whole thing to be pretty small. Smaller than this. Let me move this here. See like so, 6.6. I go to the beginning here, click on this. Then I go to the end of the frame, make it 0 0.75. I go to spline editor, zoom to fit, select all the keyframes, right click on it, go to ease, you can go to 
out cubic and close this plan editor. Just give it a background. We can add a background by using this the background node. Click on four corner gradient. Click on color. Let's pick a color here. Kind of like this color. Like so. Go here, pick something close to that color still. Like so. Then I pick those colors like so. And then I go here, I pick something there too, like this. And um, let's drag this view out. Nice. So I'm just going to bring a merge node here, connect this to the foreground, connect this to the background. And um, where's media out? Media out is up there. Drag that here, connect that, pull that here. And guys, here we have it. You can add a text node just to make it a little more interesting. Go here, just before this transform, move it here and click on the text node, connect that here. And I want the text to say resolve. And as always, I'll use null shock, one of my favorite fonts. Drag it down a bit. For this whole thing here, let's move this forward a bit. I'm going to bring a transform node here and move this up a bit. Then this text here, I'm going to move this text down a whole lot. Increase the size of this text. Move the track in a little bit. And then I make it that when this, when all of this finishes somewhere around here, is when I want the text to appear. So I'm going to go to merge keyframe this, drop the blend to zero, then go to like 15 to 20 frames out, we increase the blend to one. But from that point where it starts appearing, I go to text, I go to tracking, I keyframe this, let's set this to 1.2. Let's click keyframe this. I go to the point where the feed stops, which is here. I'm going to give it like 10 more frames after that. I'm going to go here and go to tracking and drop this to 1.1. And for this text, I can go to Spline Editor, select it, press F on the keyboard to flatten it. And um, if we play this back now, very simple stuff, right? So that's it, guys simply done and um hope you had fun on this one as much as i did take care and see you on the next one cheers